in this episode of Newland Does Physics. We've got a green object of mass M in free fall, and this time the uh, coefficient of uh, drag is actually going to represent something. So we can't just ignore uh, air friction. Eventually, what we should be able to determine is that there's a, uh, um, a terminal velocity. The acceleration that we experience in the downward direction should be counteracted by the acceleration that we experience from the, uh, I guess, deceleration, if you want to think about it that way, from air drag. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's Before we try anything else, let's apply Newton's second law. So the sum of the forces in the y direction, let's call down plus y since that's the direction of motion, that's going to equal ma. a is not a constant in this case. We want to figure out what it is, in fact. It's going to be mg, which is pointing down, minus b times v. All right? So the goal here is to find an expression for velocity, so we need to remember that acceleration is dv dt. We're going to use that to our advantage. There's a random blue mark. So m times dv dt now equals mg minus bv. All right. Um, the trick now is to separate the variables. This is going to be a differential equation. And our goal here is to get everything related to velocity on one side and everything related to time on the other. So it's a fairly straightforward chunk of calculus, but maybe not from the beginning of calculus. Um, in fact, I'm going to be a little lazy here, and I'm going to use a relationship b over m equals some new constant k, uh, which will allow me to rearrange this a little bit. So now I've got um, dv dt equals, so I'm going to divide everything by m. So I'm dividing all of this by m, g minus b over m times v, which is equal to, so now we've got dv dt equals uh, g minus k times v. That is a V, I promise. All right. Um, okay. So let's take that dvdt equals g minus kv. dvdt equals g minus kv. Let's separate our variables. So first thing we're going to do is divide both sides by this guy. So now we get the expression 1 over g minus kv dvdt. That is a D. Now it equals 1. We divided both sides by this. So let's integrate both sides with respect to time. <clears throat> and that should help us uh, move our uh, derivatives around a little bit. So now, we're, now we've got the expression integral of 1 over g minus kv times dv dt with respect to time. So that what I uh, want to do here is somehow get this in the form of dv equals integral of dt. So I'm integrating both sides with respect to time. Uh, you'll recognize that dt over dt becomes 1, and now I've got integral of 1 over g minus kv dv and integral of dt. We have to be careful with our constants. Look how it's going up at an angle there. We have to be careful with our constants of integration here um, as I go. So uh, that's a key when working on this particular kind of problem. The constants of integration, when you use your initial conditions, will tell you uh, the final relationship. Remember, we're trying to get at the, uh, the terminal velocity. That's our goal. All right. Um, now, let's use a little u substitution here. So u sub. I'm going to let u equal g minus k times v. All right. Uh, which means that du is going to equal this guy's zero, negative k dv. All right, so we're going to use those two expressions. What we had a moment ago was uh, integral of dv over g minus k times v equals integral of dt. We're not going to do anything with this yet. Uh, now let's let's substitute a bit in here. So the uh, oh well, let's simplify this. We got one over k times du equals dv. So a little bit of algebra there, so that I can uh, replace dv here with one uh, negative one over k times du, and I can replace uh, g minus kv with u. 
So now I'm going to move the 1 over k. It's a constant no matter what. I'm going to move this entire expression out in front. And now I've got integral of du over u equals integral of dt. All right? Please ignore the laser printer. And we're back. All right. So we moved the negative 1 over k in front. We've got integral of du over u. du over u is equal to the integral of dt. Um, this expression here, I hope it is one you recognize. Negative 1 over k. The integral of du over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. Uh, and I know this is going to look rather strange. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to use a big bracket here. But I'm going to, instead of just saying plus c, I'm going to say minus natural log of our constant c. I'm allowed to do that, and it's going to make the form a little bit easier to understand when we're done here. So forgive the, instead of plus c, I've got minus natural log of c. Okay? I'll take care of the, na the negative 1 over k as well. So this is equal to the integral of t with respect to time is, is t. And as long as I've got one constant of integration here, I'm okay with that. So now we've got this strange looking expression here that we've got to somehow uh, simplify, somehow work it out. Okay. Um, it's worth noting that our velocity can be positive and it can be zero. It will not, for this expression, the... Uh, air drag will not work backwards. It's not physically possible in this scenario. So as the velocity increases, there'll be a greater drag, but the maximum effect is to cancel out the acceleration downward. Um, the motion downward will not stop. There will still be a, a velocity in the downward direction. So it's not as if the thing will hover. Um, I'm yammering. I'm just trying to make an excuse for the natural log here. But nonetheless, let's keep going. So now I've got, let's, let's clean this up just a touch. Now I've got uh, negative 1 over k and natural log of absolute value of u minus natural log of c equals t. All right, oh, I left out a paren there. So the reason we did that is we essentially need to exponentiate both sides of this. So uh, you know what, before we do that, since I'm, I know I'm clumsy with algebra, let's multiply both sides by, by negative kt. So what we are, uh, and as a matter of fact, not only that, but let's recognize what's going on here with this natural log. I can say natural log of absolute value of u divided by c, since uh, there's a subtraction there. This is absent, these are absolute value r's. And I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative k times t. All right, now we can exponentiate both sides. And uh, e to the natural log of u over c, absolute value of u over c is absolute value of u over c. And I no longer need these absolute value bars. Um, so this is really u over c equals e to the negative kt. u over c, that's almost a nice form. Let's finish this out. u equals c times e to the negative kt. So we've got a lot of... Uh, variables here. So u equals c times e to the negative k times t. I think before we try to, to figure out the constant of integration, it's probably time to plug back in our u value. u, by the way, equaled g minus k times v. All right, so now we've got g minus k times v equals our constant of integration e to the negative k times t. All right, uh, so this was a free fall scenario where at time equals zero, the velocity was zero. So, all right, that means we can write g minus zero equals c times e to the zero. So that this expression is now one, which means that g equals c. All right, maybe not completely clear yet. Again, stray mark. But now we've got... Um, the, this, the final version of this expression is uh, not the final version, but the cleanest one so far. g minus kv equals g times e to the negative kt. Now this exponential should look, you should expect to see that in, in a problem with uh, a resistive force, especially one with air drag. So um, 
this is still not a, a beautiful form, but let's plug back in our k value. k, by the way, was equal to b over m. All right, and if we do that, then now we've got g minus b over m times velocity equals g, and now it's e, in, instead of uh, kt, this is actually negative b over m times time. So this expression is b over m times time. All right, still not a beautiful form. Um, let's clean it up even some more. So I'll tell you what, negative b over m times v, uh, and we're going to subtract both si g from both sides. So now we've got g, oops, what am I doing there? Let's fix that. Sorry about that. All right, so now we've got uh, g e to the negative b over m times time minus g. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Um, all right, let me flip my cheap sheet over. Clean, make sure I clean this up. Okay, so we're still not quite done though. This really could be cleaner. First of all, let's multiply both sides by negative one. So now we've got b over m times velocity equals, and I'm gonna flip this expression around. So now we've got g times one minus e to the negative b over m times time. Okay, that's almost in a format that I'm satisfied with. By the way, I did two things. I multiplied by negative one and I factored out the g. So now we've got, the, what, what I want you to notice is this expression here. So as time becomes very large, this expression becomes very small and uh, we'll be able to find our terminal velocity. You could also, by the way, if uh, ma equals mg minus b times v, when this expression goes to zero, mg must equal b times v. So I've moved that guy over there. So now we could actually use a little subscript t there to represent the terminal velocity. So we better end up when we're done here with mg over b representing our terminal velocity. All right, so let's multiply both sides by m over b. So velocity equals m times g over b times quantity one minus e to the negative b over m times t. This right here is our terminal velocity. For very large values of t, if we were to, here, let's one last step. Velocity equals mg over b times quantity one minus e to the negative b over m times time. If we were to take the limit of this expression as time approaches infinity, this component goes to zero. And so v terminal is mg over b. So now we have a confirmation of that statement. So the final form of this is velocity at any time t is mg over b. This is nothing more than the uh, weight of the object. This is that uh, drag coefficient times one minus e to the negative b over m times time. So for very large values of t, you just end up at the terminal velocity anyway. If uh, we were to graph this, we would find so if this is our uh, velocity versus time graph, we'll find that there's an asymptote at v sub t over here. And by the way, don't forget this was an absolute value before. This guy, that's terrible, but it approaches that. So for some time, there's, uh, there's definitely an, ex an ex hang on. For some time there, the uh, object is definitely accelerating. And eventually what it does, there, that looks better. There. It's a terrible graph. But the asymptotic uh, relationship here is it approaches V sub T. Okay, cool.